Welcome to the Gamers Inn. Come on in, pull up a chair next to the fire. It looks like you've had a long journey. I'm your host, Jocelyn, and joining me as always is my co-host, Ryan. Hello, Ryan. Hello. You sound uh, exasperated. No, I just, <laughs> it was really funny because I just, I was making sure that the stream was up and then there was <laughs> such a delay for, I don't know, some reason. But It's uh, Twitch. Yeah, it's, it's Twitch. Delays are always different, but I was like, I don't even know if the thing is actually started on the right channel. I should probably, oh yeah, there it is. Okay, I'm your host, Jocelyn. So there was a little bit of a yeah, technical streamy delay glitch. Yeah, and the last thing you want is to do an hour long show to realize you haven't been live at all. Exactly. So I, I, I totally understand our plight, but you know what? Technical difficulties aside, which there haven't been any yet. Why am I saying that? Because <laughs> uh, you just how, want to jinx us. <laughs> I am all about making our lives a living hell. So <laughs> that's why I'm here, really, to be honest. <laughs> How's it going? What's going on besides all that stuff? <sighs> time is breaking. That is what is going on. <laughs> yeah? Did you yeah. do that too? You broke time? I, I did. I broke. I totally broke time. That's that's the Twitch delay problem is I broke mm. time with all of my quantum breaking. <laughs> yeah, there was a fracture... And then uh, that weird guy who runs a brothel from Game of Thrones showed up and was like, now I'm older. And then uh, <laughs> that's it's... pretty much quantum break in a nutshell. It's, yeah. He's well, there he's... and then he's like, whoa, older. <laughs> to me, that confused me because like I, I kind of just rem talking about Game of Thrones. I, I recognize him as that character. Then I see him in this game and I'm like, man, I don't remember him looking that young. Like, whoa, he's looking good. He's working out. Is, is the next season of Game of Thrones like his season where he like dyes his hair and <laughs> wins a tournament or something. And in this one, he's like, I guess he's 17 years younger. And then when he shows up again, he's, he's, he's all old and stuff. Mm. So but yeah, time travel. It's, it's, it's a really interesting game and, and we're mm -hmm. not going to get into anything too crazy spoilery. Uh, Ryan and I are, I think around the same point in the game. Uh, mm -hmm. so far it's super fun. I'm liking it a lot. I wanted to just cancel the show and keep playing, but Ryan made me come and do the show. Yeah. Cause you know, you know why it's interesting. Like we have a game here that is not made by Blizzard and, and Jocelyn's, uh, you know, enjoying it. And it happens every once in a while. It happens more often than you think, but yeah, it seems you know, like all I enjoy and all I talk about are Blizzard games, but <laughs> yeah, but with a weekly show, it's like, I okay. liked, I liked Far Cry. You did, and you liked uh, you liked Tomb Raider as well. I'm not yeah. I'm not like throwing you completely under the non weather related bus here. I'm just <laughs> I'm just strictly talking about on a weekly show. It it could be there's always something to talk about in the Blizzard world, and it's nice that and I'm I'm right there with you. Like I love Blizzard games, and it's nice when there's a game that comes out that isn't a Blizzard game. And I, and Quantum Break is one of those games that is a nice change of pace because you know what? It's not open world. It's like a linear game and stuff. It's great. Exactly. I will say I think they're approaching a place that I enjoy with the whole, like, play a story that mm -hmm. is very time sensitive while still having collectibles. Mm -hmm. So, and I really like that they're, because they've basically implemented what looks like a um, like a, a timeline system and it tells you like where in the timeline you're supposed to find the collectibles. So instead of it just saying, you know, there are 17 collectibles in this level, you've actually like, you can tell if you found like collectible seven, but you missed collectible three, like there's no point in trying to go back. Cause there's many, many kind of gated points in the timeline. You can't go back further than. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's not quite open worldy. You just have to kind of pay attention while you're in a room to see if you can see anything that looks like it might be a, a, a clue or something. And uh, so that way you're not like continually like scouring the same level. It's like if you've got all your little blue dots so far, good, keep going. And if you don't have a little blue dot, then oops, you missed it. Keep going. You know, like there isn't that whole, oh, I have to go all the way back and try to da da, like, because you can't. So. Mm -hmm. I, I'm actually really liking the kind of balance that they've struck between storytelling and collectibles. Yeah, the the collectibles that they offer in the game are are seem like more important to the character in terms of making him more adept at taking on challenges that are thrown across him. Like basically, your your dude Sean Ashmore, uh, guy from Animorphs. <laughs> Canadian uh, frozen he's man from, from X-Men. from X-Men, yeah, I was going to say. Yeah. I'm just starting <laughs> at the Animorphs, more important like work. 
you know, like I'm starting at his, uh, uh, the, 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 like if you met the guy in person, that's the first thing you'd leave with. And he'd be like, oh man, you're like my biggest fan. There was like 13 of those episodes and nobody watched them. Uh, I watched Animorphs back in the day. <laughs> I, I mean, I did too. But what I'm saying is that there's two people that watched it in comparison to X-Men, which a lot of people watch. I see. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, you know, we're just, we're just, we were, we were on the, we were on the nose when it came to great Sean Ashmore content. <laughs> uh, but no, he, he plays the main character, Jack Joyce is his name, yes. I think. Yeah. Yeah. And he uh, sort of is thrown into this world where basically time breaks. And he is labeled. I was gonna a, say we don't want to we don't want to get into it too too much. Yeah, I don't want to spoil it, but I I, I just feel like uh, anyways time breaks and and yes you're right like we won't get into it. And Jack Joyce is your main character, and as you're running around finding these little side things like accessing computers, reading emails, like getting information about what uh, your anta- your antagonist is planning and the the, the sort of corporation above that is planning it, it really feels like okay this is research this isn't just like fluff mm-hmm. save a chicken quest you know and uh I, I really dig that so it makes this linear game which is very linear it's usually how it works is it's like a corridor game which opens up into an arena and then back into a corridor and there's some like little spots where you can you know jump out and um the most interesting sort of like side pocket i found was a was sort of this area that had was all fenced off, closed, and um, there was a bunch of boxes in it, but there was a collectible in behind it. Mm. And you can use your time powers to actually affect the timeline of that room specifically. And basically you rewind the, the um, it was like a security area. You rewind it so you see the door sort of flapping open, you know, as people are coming in and bringing stuff in and, you know, using it as a storage area. And then basically once you get to the very end of that sort of little snippet of time, it's basically an empty room. You can walk right in and get your, your collectible. Mm-hmm. And that's just a neat way of using time. And the last time I, I, I saw that used was in, I think it was, um, it was an old PS3 game. Now I can't even remember the name of it. It was a, it was a shooter and you use time uh, to affect your enemies and to manipulate objects, like bringing them from the past to the future. So that like a rusted staircase that had fallen apart. And then you basically rewind time. So it becomes a working staircase. Mm-hmm. I can't even remember the name of the game. I keep wanting to say Syndicate, but that's not it. It was like, it was like this really. It was by Raven. I don't know. Maybe the chat room will know. But I really dig that puzzle solving, right? And and like you said, the timeline for finding collectibles is just a really cool way to gauge. Okay, where am I? Where am I going to find the next thing? Is it in this little area? Um, I haven't been sort of religiously checking that. Have you been doing that, or you just kind of like discovered it? I I have been checking it a little bit. Um more often than I think I have in, in past games because I'm just like my, my gut reaction as soon as something started popping up saying like this many like story, I can't remember what they're, they're not called like plot points, but they're called, mm. um, Oh man, I can't remember now, but they're basically there's their story objects. So it right. tells you how many of these story objects that kind of like flesh out what's actually going on in the universe. Um, so once I saw that pop up and it was like one of 13, discovered i was like oh man like if these are actual like real story content pieces i don't want to miss them so i was i was being very kind of methodical and then later on if like i it took me a little while to kind of notice this but when you look at the timeline top right it actually tells you like what all the dots are not what what they are but um how many of each type there are so you know if you found like all of the story pieces versus all of the basically currency that allows you to upgrade your powers, you know, versus the the intel against the bad guys. So it's like there are different types of things you can find Mm -hmm. and they're not all story pieces. So I've kind of focused on the story pieces because I want to make sure that I don't kind of miss anything. And it is a very like physics heavy story because obviously like, you're breaking time. So there's going to be some mind bendy kind of thing, like just uh, story aspects that are a little bit more difficult to wrap your head around. So making sure that I actually find all the story pieces so that I can keep all this like time travel physics-y stuff straight. Because I mean, I, I am a smart person, but I was a like chemistry, biology, smart science person. <laughs> physics was always like, okay, so stuff goes in like holes and pulses and all of a sudden everything breaks the universe. Like 
<laughs> these two particles meet and then there's just nothing. Like it was just, it's <laughs> the idea of physics was just like always way, way, way over my head. So, yeah. Well, and that's the thing is like time travel isn't a, is, is all theoretical in the real world and, and doesn't actually physically exist. But in this game, they kind of take, and I don't know whether the science is accurate or not. Probably isn't because it's time travel. Does It's not real. I, uh, it's not real, Jocelyn. No, and I was making the shrugging like I don't even know if it could or could. Oh, be. okay. Like, <laughs> I thought you were about to like launch into a diatribe about how like you know, the DeLorean is the greatest vehicle ever made and oh, it's no. the only time travel. You know, but but really, it's it kind of flew over my head at the beginning, and then as you sort of collect these side bubbles of like accessing laptops, there's actually a laptop at the very beginning where you'll access it. It's the the character's laptop. Your um your friend. And he's standing right there, and you go to use it, and he's like, "Dude, privacy much?" And I'm like, "Someone's got to keep tabs on you." And I thought that That's was a, so a nice because, touch <laughs> because um, I guess he'd walked uh, he'd walked too far ahead of me or something because mm-hmm. he totally didn't do that to me. <laughs> yeah, it, it was just nice, and it sort of harkened back to our time with Life is Strange, where like mm-hmm. sort of snooping was the way to beat the game, and people would often call you on your bluff and oftentimes they wouldn't because you'd just be going through their trash and they wouldn't say anything unless you found something that was that was mm-hmm. that was really uh, of note but it, it, those side stories and if you read through them some of them are just filler but others actually give you insight into what your enemies are doing and, and what they're doing trying to do against you mm-hmm. um, and like you mentioned there are like these I think they're called quantum ripples and there's I think there's they're the ones that really impact the game I think um, are they? Well, not impact the game, but impact the TV show in a way that, um, it, and by really, I mean that they physically do something in the TV show, whether it's like a, like one example was I found a statue and he's like, oh, that's my statue, put it in my office. And I'm sure like down the road in the TV show, oh my God, this statue will be in his office. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it'll have any like lasting effect, like well, some I'm, of the choices you make, but. Yeah, that's kind of, um. So I guess, yeah, we should we should mention. So basically, mm. the video game is done in acts. So mm. you do the first act, and then you get the first episode of a TV show. And it's literally like a 20-minute long live-action TV show yeah. that has been impacted by your decisions. And so there is a big decision right before the episode to kind of end the act. And in the first one, it was from the perspective of the bad guy. And he basically had to decide between one of two courses of action. And then so you make that decision. And actually, Ryan, it told me at the end, you and I made the same decision. So <laughs> we did it. Yeah. And, and again, we're not going to go into plot at all. <laughs> but um, so you make one of these two decisions. And then based on that decision, you get to watch an episode of the TV show. Mm. And it was, um, I don't know. I'm kind of on the fence of how I feel about this because first of all, I love the actors yeah. like the, um, Oh crap. What's his name? Um, the guy from fringe, he plays, Oh, Boyle. He's like yeah. the head of like the FBI fringe team. Sure. And uh, he's in this and he's fantastic. He's like the bad guys, like right hand man. And, uh, obviously, um, Sean, Sean Ashmore. Mm-hmm. Yes. Sean Ashmore is, uh, he's really good too. He's not actually in the first episode, but I'm looking forward to seeing him down the road. But, um, mm. and obviously the guy from Game of Thrones who plays Littlefinger, like he's a fantastic actor as well. So, you know, they've got really solid live action acting talent and it's cool to see them kind of in this world acting out these portions of the story of video games. And mm-hmm. that's one thing that, you know, we've talked about many times on the show is like, what actually is the importance of story in video games and you know like how do you get a big huge story kind of across to your audience without boring them and everybody likes tv so why not put some tv in your video games it's like a super duper extended cinematic (laughs) yeah like Hideo Kojima is probably like why didn't I think of this you know like I can have 20 minute uh cutscenes and people won't be upset and I, I think it's a cool idea. Like, I like the concept. Um, the And the idea of impacting the show is technologically, like, really interesting. Not just with your big choices, but the way they swap, they'll swap they swap scenes in and out. And I haven't experienced this because I've only played it once. Um, but there are certain things you can do in the game, like, as, e- as simple as, like, uh, it's more about 
switching a light on and off. Like you don't literally switch a light on and off and then someone comes in and says, hey, the light's off. And then if Jocelyn didn't switch it on, it says something different. But it, it's more little things that will impact the show. And there'll be a little like icon in the top right, like, oh, Quantum Break remembers that you said this. And, mm-hmm. and it'll it'll show a different snippet mm-hmm. of the show. And the way it kind of cues those in, and I don't know if you recognized it, but I certainly didn't recognize things being different and maybe that requires a second playthrough but the game did certainly tell me that something on screen was happening because I made a specific choice or discovered something Mm -hmm. specific yeah it said and this confused me because I did with quantum break what I've been trying to do with a lot of video games and a lot of movies lately is basically Mm -hmm. I didn't read anything I tried not to like I watched the announcement trailer and that was it and I was like this looks cool this looks like a game I can get behind I'm gonna try it end of Jocelyn looking at any kind of anything related to Quantum Break. So I had no idea that there were episodes. <laughs> at like, yeah. So I found the first uh, ripple and then did something. And then it said, watch the episode to see the kind of impacts of your decision. And I was like, watch the episode. Like I actually paused the game and I like turned to Matt and I was like, um, are is this a TV show? Am I supposed to be like, like we don't have cable. Is this gonna... <laughs> and I was like, and how is my decision going to impact a TV show? Like I thought maybe it was almost like a crowdsourcing kind of thing. Like, because oh. at the end, after your big decision, it says like 70% of the community chose the same thing that you did. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, maybe that dictates what episode they show on TV. Like I was I was so confused until I finished the first act and then it like launches into this episode. So I was kind of like, oh, it's included in the game. That's cool. But it took me a long time to actually figure out that that's what was happening. And uh, yeah, so I don't know for me. So that that's kind of all the good stuff. It was really cool mm-hmm. that there was this kind of live action cinematic explain the story break. But then all of a sudden it was like, OK, well, I'm going to sit here for 20 minutes now. Like, I don't want to watch TV right now. I, I want to play <laughs> yeah. a video game and now I can't skip it. You can, I think you can skip it. But um, if you skip it, you're missing this big chunk of story. <laughs> so mm-hmm. I'm kind of like, I want to get back to playing the game, but I don't want to miss the story behind the game that I'm playing. So I ended up watching the episode. And exactly. it was cool. It was good. And I liked it. Um, and there wasn't really anything that would have been real action-y because you end up actually playing through kind of um, Sean Ashmore's view of what happened in that cinematic. So basically you're seeing mm. one view and then you get to play through another one. But yeah. I was just kind of like, this is a real interesting choice because it's so long and it's such a pause in the action. Yeah, and to me, I was watching it and... I would pause it every once in a while because I would have to get up and take care of Caden or go take care of something where which is how I would normally play a game now and you know pausing it every once in a while and with the show it didn't it didn't feel like it was going to I I was able to like you know jump out and go back into it it felt like I had to watch it in one sitting uh it's just really odd to me and when I was done, I was like, that was really cool. But was there, besides the first, a couple of minutes in that 20 minute segment, was there really like a lot in there that I need to see? Like there was a a couple scenes that were sort of establishing one of the characters' backstory. It's like, Mm -hmm. we didn't need to know that. Like that's kind of Well, but maybe we do need to know that though. (laughs) Well, maybe. And that's- Because then like you, in the second act, you read an email and it's like, kind of gives a little bit more of his motivation. And since you've seen him with his family, you're kind of like, oh, okay, yeah, he's a lot more relatable than I thought he was going to be. Mm-hmm. And you might not have made that leap if all of, all that you had seen had been, you know, the video game portion. So <sighs> I don't but know. I, I Yeah. I, would you I'm watch this split. show? If, if Would you watch the show if it was on? Like if Quantum Break was just a TV show, would you watch it? Like that's that's um, a question we have to kind of – established i think i think so like i mentioned yeah. you know they've got some real good acting talent tied to this game and tied to the obviously then therefore the tv show that goes along with the game mm-hmm. um so i i think i probably would because i mean i like i mentioned before the place that i love the the one actor from is fringe and this is very fringe like <laughs> yeah it's very science heavy very uh very tech heavy mm-hmm. which is which is awesome because those are the kind of shows that we don't get a lot of on tv exactly um, 
so it's nice to see the game and that's the other thing you know having a tv show sort of inside the game kind of made remedy go out and like okay we need to hire actors mm -hmm. we can't just not that you know voice actors aren't actors they are but you need a different type of skill set to do all of it mm -hmm. you know like you need experience uh with tv movies video games like that whole gambit and that's kind of where Littlefinger falls short for me because I thought he was um, he was really good in the TV show, but there were some instances in the video game where he was kind of like, and maybe that's his character, but he kind of felt like really awkward. Like, oh man, you could have mm -hmm. probably done that line a little better. Um, but all in all, like the TV show is just such a neat concept that I'll that I just enjoy it for for what it is. Like, it's it's never been done before from what I and you know. There's been full motion video in video games, but mm -hmm. nothing like a TV show in between. And, and when they announced it at the beginning, like when they announced the game and they announced what they were doing with the show, to me, it kind of was like, well, that's kind of gimmicky, but they really ran with it. And I mean, we've only seen one episode and we'll definitely, you know, chime back in later on, but I don't know. It's just, it seems, it just seems, it seems really cool. And, uh, the combat is a little funky. Like, have you been enjoying the combat or, Eh, it's kind of okay. I find, for me at least, all of the abilities having, like, time in the name, I get confused about, like, what, what I'm supposed to be doing when, and there's this kind of, basically, I, I've just been shooting everything. I haven't <laughs> been using a lot of my time-based abilities. I just got, um, like, basically a time, time bomb, I guess. Right, time bomb. You kind of, like, charge up your freeze time space thing, and then it just explodes, and so I've been using that to get rid of the first kind of wave of enemies. And then I've just right. been shooting my way through the rest of it. So I haven't been really like, I haven't been using like my, I guess, bullet time, whatever that is, where you kind of like dodge and then hit aim. And then yeah. it like slows time and you're just like, boom, 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 boom. <laughs> so I haven't really been doing that because I haven't had to, but um, I think it's probably about to get harder. So yeah. And and that's the thing is uh, the sort of time abilities are the cool part of combat and the gunplay sort of ratcheted up by the fact that you have to stand to shoot like no matter what. Mm -hmm. And I've been kind of caught off guard by like people flanking me. That's why I don't suggest anybody play this on hard because I'm sure once it gets once you're on the hard difficulty like enemy the AI starts flanking you and then you're essentially, you have to stand up from cover to shoot behind your cover. Mm -hmm. So you're not only getting shot from the side, you're getting shot from the front. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's some abilities you can use to sort of combat that, like the the time shield. The shield, yeah. See, yeah. again, <laughs> the time shield. They literally just throw time in front of it. It's like, yeah. okay, let's give them a bomb, but we'll call it a time bomb. <laughs> you know, it's like, couldn't we call it like a quantum bomb? Nope, nope. it's got to be a time bomb. <laughs> All right. So just throw time in front of everything. And I'll look at your spreadsheet when I get back. <laughs> uh, and there, there's a lot of abilities in this, and, and the upgrade, uh, the upgrade paths for those abilities is is really neat. Um, and there's even more story in there that you unlock by finding collectibles, like little audio diaries. Mm -hmm. They really. I haven't found any audio diaries yet. They sort of unlock, like you don't oh, even. Okay. You just oh, play the sorry. game. Sorry, maybe I might have gotten the first one for the bad guy. Mm. I think. Yeah, those ones you have to find intel for, and the other oh, ones just okay. sort of unlock by progressing in the game. And I mean, they really—that's that's what's great about it. Like the game is very linear. It's 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 probably not an, a hundred hour game. It's probably a decent ten hour game. And the way they've sort of I, what I like to see with more games like this is what they're doing, and the, the, you know, padding it out with story based collectibles, you know, audio diaries, these TV show stuff. It's just a really neat way to take a linear experience uh, and sort of expand on it and, and give you some more fluff to enjoy as you're working your way through the adventure. Um, and personally, I'd probably prefer more games to be like this as opposed to the 100-hour epic where, like, okay, is this going to be a, a story about kicking chickens or is this going to be the main plot line or is this going to be one of those side quests that, like, everybody's talking about at the water cooler the next mm -hmm. day? Like, it's really hit and miss with a lot of those big games. And with Quantum Break, like, Everybody, it is unfortunate that everybody has like pretty much the same experience. <laughs> um, that is one thing that sort of falls flat with these type of games. But man. although I will say, um, the first decision that you had to make before mm. the TV show, the fact that there was a TV show made me actually really want to go through and play it again to see mm -hmm. the other 
choice, like to see the other side of the TV show. Um, because they were, without spoilers, very radically different um, in just the way that, you know, um, every every character, what was going to happen to them was just, it was completely different. And then um, playing in the second act, um, like different things would probably happen. Like, I think I would have a totally different experience in act two had I made a different choice at the end of act one, mm-hmm. because there's some characters that just wouldn't be around anymore. So seeing how all that played out, um, it was really, uh, could be really interesting. I think it, it would actually would be worth a second playthrough, which usually at this point in games is not something I'm saying. Like I've only played five hours of it. Like, yeah. Yeah. It would be interesting to see what happens uh, after that choice. And I wonder if when you beat the game, the game sort of supports like, a okay, you can go back through, you can start wherever you want, Mm -hmm. do different choices. Like, I like when games also do that, where they kind of give you shortcuts to jump to specific choices. And that's really nice, especially with uh, the limited amount of time we have to play games these days. I think that it does. Um, (laughs) When you go into the timeline of the collectibles, like you, there's different acts and you can like restart at checkpoints and stuff like that. So... Mm-hmm. I, I would think that that would carry through all the way past when you finish the main story, I, I think. I'm not sure. I hope so. Mm-hmm. We'll find out soon enough because we uh, <laughs> I'm probably going to blast through this game because yeah. I, I'm really enjoying it. Yep. So I think um, before you talk about the other thing that you've been goofing around with this week, um, we should just yeah. kind of mention to everybody that um, this is probably all the Quantum Break talk that we're actually going to do on Gamers Improper because what we're going to do is we're going to do kind of a spoiler pilot type of an episode for one of our Patreon goals. So you guys can see what it is that we're thinking when it comes to uh, Inside the Game, which is going to be our kind of dive into crazy spoiler plot point talks about Mm -hmm. a game that we're playing. So we thought that Quantum Break is probably a really good kind of pilot project. So, uh, So yeah, no more Quantum Break talk on Gamers Improper. Uh, We will probably have that uh, kind of pilot primer episode uh, sometime in the next couple of weeks so uh, you guys can see what our Patreon goal is actually going to look like. So look forward to that. So Ryan, what else have you been uh, been messing around with this week? So I've been goofing around with Mitomo and I, I actually have it up right now and I, <laughs> I've got my meat. So I figured it'd be rather than like trying to explain it, it'd be funnier to actually like just do a couple questions. So basically Mitomo is Nintendo's first uh, smartphone app that they've developed uh, as part of their new program and uh, it's not a game it's more of like a social interaction game per se. I don't know yeah. it's like <laughs> I, yeah I, I mean I, it is an app and it's because you don't actually do st- there is like some little mini game stuff to it but basically the whole catch is you add friends and your me you set up your me which is which is really cool the way you create your me is, is neat and um your me exists in this world and he goes that he or she goes out and talks to other people and then comes back and like says, Hey, I asked all these questions to these people and these were the answers. So like, uh, I have it. I'm going to turn this down. And, uh, so my me like, we'll ask a question. And this is what it sounds like. Let me know if you can, if, if it's coming in kind of weird. So like, What's up? it actually voices all your answers as well. Oh, here we go. If it's not Jennifer, Lawrence, you're wrong. Nah, anyways, so that's basically what it was. It's, it's really weird. Like someone said, so Jedi Hero asked me, who, he, he was asked, what do you think Ryan's celebrity crush is? Like Jennifer Lawrence or da- Daisy Ridley? It's like, yeah, it's probably Daisy Ridley. And I can answer that and, and say like, yeah, she's really cool. So that's cool. And then you basically just go through all these questions, <laughs> hearing answers. It's it's really ridiculous, okay. but it's kind of addicting. Um, I haven't been playing as much as I used to be, but... It's how long it's, has it been out? Like you're already not playing it very it, often. And that's the thing. Uh, it's been out a week, and it's really interesting at the very beginning. And then you kind of fall off the wagon. You're not you're not playing as much. You're, it's like any of those free to play apps. You're not meant to sort of play it nonstop. You're meant to check in for about twenty minutes each day. And really, the the sort of the flow is you check in every day. You kind of look at your your answers from your friends, and then you you answer a question of yourself, and then that me takes that new information and sort of spreads it like wildfire. And mm-hmm. sometimes the questions are like quirky, like that, like who's your celebrity. Sometimes it's like what's your favorite food, and uh, that was the first question I asked. And I'm like, yeah, pizza. It's like, well, that's boring. And occasionally it'll send you like little photos that 
your me has uh has done and they're they're usually very ridiculous um but it's a free to play app it's me tomo and it's i don't know it's just uh it's not a, it's not groundbreaking like it's not what everybody wanted from Nintendo making smartphone apps like it's not Mario Brothers mm-hmm. it's it's a Nintendo ass first experiment on on smartphone um and it's it's just really quirky and I, I i do suggest anybody who has a smartphone like check it out play with it you probably have many of your friends already on the device uh playing like i've got 40 people on there already and i was th- i was expecting to go in there and be like I'm going to play with like two other people because that's how my experience has been with Nintendo work. Like I usually like click with one or two people that are actively playing the game. Um, But there's a lot of people playing and a lot of people really enjoying it. And it's kind of like a weird interacty like question and answer board. And there's like comments for every question. So you can actually comment on everything. Um, And like Leo in the chat room is saying, it's, it's, it's an interesting way to get people to like, maybe ask or answer questions that you wouldn't normally ask. Uh, so that's kind of odd when it starts off, like, what's your favorite food? Because everybody's going to answer something, like, pretty lame, like mm-hmm. pizza or or noodles or something. Or sushi was a big noodles? one. Noodles? <laughs> I don't know. Like, some people, like... My favorite food is noodles, not spaghetti. Yeah. Noodles. No, just noodles in general, which <laughs> I think is... Not dinner. <laughs> it, it's cheating to say noodles. It, it's... I mean, it's weird. Like, I'm not going to play it for, like a lot longer but uh it's just a a neat first stab and you kind of look at the game and you think like okay what is the majority of ios users and there's a lot of them ios and android there's a lot of them playing these like little social experiment type games and making a lot of money from a a few amount of people um and i think this is kind of like a first good stab from them in terms of hitting the market like it's not for you or me or or uh, hardcore gamer mcgee over there like it's for sort of everybody else mm-hmm. you know and i think trying it out is, is how t- are how are they going to make money is are there in-app purchases for accessories or something yeah i think uh in the shop so you earn coins by answering questions commenting on on answers stuff like that and those coins are used to purchase clothing for your for your me uh and you can go in and and you know, dress up your me however you want. Like I found a cat, so I put a cat on my shoulders, a little cat on my shoulder. It's super adorable. <laughs> um, and I think if you don't have coins at the end, it'll like check out and say like, oh, you don't have enough coins. Do you want to buy coins? Oh, uh, okay. You know? So it's one of those games. It's not like, it's never, I've been playing pretty steadily for the last week and it's never asked me for money, which oh, is okay. kind of So like, it's not like totally crazy in your face. Exactly. And, and that's the great part about the game is that Nintendo. The one thing I was worried Nintendo would do with these free-to-play games is is at like just adamantly ask you for money, and they haven't done that. Mm-hmm. I haven't had a pop-up yet. I've always had enough coins to buy stuff. I mean, I'm not going crazy and like, oh, I need to have that skirt, you know, like I need to have that <laughs> that nice hat. Uh, I've just sort of been casually playing with it and having fun, like answering questions. And the best part about the game is when me's come over to visit and they ask you a personal question, where like they don't go and spread it out. It's just. Mm-hmm it's a conversation between you and a friend and sometimes it's uh it's just some really great really great answers that come back like someone someone said to me like uh oh where would you go on vacation with Ryan I'm like Hyrule and I'm like yes that <laughs> sounds amazing <laughs> so it's it's really low key and uh it's not a it's not a game but it's totally worth checking out cuz uh, probably a lot of your your friends are playing and mm-hmm. um Get on it now. It's yeah, free exactly. and there's no reason not to be playing it right now because if you're not on it in the next probably week or so, yeah, I'd be surprised oh. if this actually sticks around as something it, people are constantly checking. Yeah, it's going to fall pretty hard. It's going to be Animal Crossing again. <laughs> yeah, among like core core gamers, I think it's going to fall pretty quickly in terms, of, uh, in terms of them using it and playing it. But I think, you know... A lot, you know, in terms of the whole market, I think Nintendo's. It'll be interesting to see how much money they actually make with it, mm-hmm. because I think that's what everybody's waiting to see. Um, they had like I think four million users in the first week of uh, first three days of launch, including Japan and worldwide. So that's one metric. But the real metric people want to hear is uh, how much money you're making, because mm-hmm. that's what the shareholders want. So that's that'll be the ne- next interesting piece in this whole like Nintendo doing smartphone apps. Mm-hmm. Type thing. Yeah. You totally just reminded me of the other game that I played this week, and uh, it was obviously very forgettable because I didn't even think to put it in the notes. Um, I can't even express how disappointed I am in this game. It's like that 
I, yeah, I don't even know. It just, it feels like I keep going back to EA and then they keep like punching me in the stomach. And then I'm like, okay, that kind of hurt and really sucked. But, um, mm. okay, EA, I'm going to go back again. And oh, oh, yep. There's, there's the gut punch again. Okay. <laughs> oh. And, uh, so this one that I'm talking about is the Sims 4. Uh, you guys probably remembered I downloaded this like day one. I gave it a shot and it was like a totally gutted version of Sims 3. Like it had zero functionality. I was really disappointed. That was back in September 2014. So they just released the second expansion pack. And so I was like, okay, you know what? I'll get the expansion packs. They're on like a super crazy sale. I'll, I'll jump back in maybe with the expansion packs. They have expanded the game back to a an acceptable level of what I would want to do, like enough different um, objects and stories and, you know, just all the stuff that kind of Sims 3 did really, really well. Mm -hmm. And so that was fine. So I loaded up these two expansions and there is a kind of like night out expansion and there's a careers expansion. There were expansions like this in previous Sims titles and the amount of careers that you could have in Sims 3 was something... There was, like, 40. And, like, I'm oh. not exaggerating. Like, I Googled it to make sure that I wasn't, re like, remembering it wrong. And there are literally, like, 40 different things that you can do in Sims 3. Guess how many there are in Sims 4? How many career paths? Uh, five. Four. Oh, wow. I was lowballing. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> there I was going to say like four. four different things that you can do. Oh, That's man. That's it. I was just, like... Are you kidding me? Like, come on. And the, mm. it's not like it's a tenth of the price of Sims 3. Like, there is no reason for this game to exist at all. Like, man, oh man, I can't, I was, I was so disappointed. So do, disappointed. Do they hit the reset, like, do they hit the reset button every time they come up with a new Sims where that you have to rebuy the careers pack, the, 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 oh yeah. Pack? If okay. you have, like, so if you've bought Sims 3, None of the content carries over. Sims 4 is a totally new game. So you have to rebuy the base game. And then every time there's an expansion, you have to rebuy that. And now what they've started doing is they don't even give you full expansions anymore. They give you essentially like DLC and they've split it into like story content and objects. So you can buy like a stuff pack, which is the objects, which is like more mm -hmm. stuff to put in your home that's themed. And then there's like, um, I can't even remember what they call the other ones, but it's essentially like story. It's like things to do, things to actually interact with and progress through. So I I can't even like I'm just I'm just so disappointed because I mean I have been a gamer who has loved The Sims since it first came out. Like I remember playing the crap out of the original Sims in high school. I played the crap out of Sims 2. I played not as much Sims 3, but at least I, I enjoyed it still. And they had some innovative ideas. They did like world adventures and stuff. It was really, really cool. Mm -hmm. um, because basically like original Sims was like the whole top down view. And then Sims 2, they did like the um, like 3D, like you can get right down in and look at your character. And so that was like a huge leap forward. And then they had cool things you could do. You could go to university. They had they brought in a whole new like age bracket so you could actually make your Sims live longer. Then they could have families and like pass stuff down. Like it was super, super cool. And then Sims 3 didn't really um, innovate too much, but at least they had like they had world adventures. So you could go to like Paris and there was a whole bunch of different things that you could do and stories you could experience in Paris. And then you could go home again and there was like um, dungeons you could go through. Like you could literally do like dungeon crawling in the Sims. It was crazy cool. Cause you'd like go to Egypt and explore the pyramids. And like, mm -hmm. it was just really, really, and Sims 4, it's just crap. Like total utter, like just throw it off the cliff crap. <laughs> that That is unfortunate. Cause that sort of falls in line with how EA has been treating a lot of Max's uh, mm -hmm. properties with, with SimCity and now with, the Sims, and, and this goes back to um, like the Mitomo conversation, and it feels like the like. And correct me because I haven't played this. I haven't played The Sims since Sims Two, which was very in depth, very uh, a very very good sim game. Um, it feels like what they're aiming for with The Sims Four is sort of like a wide a wide market, like you know, building a base game that sort of has the base Sims experience, and then sort of nickeling and diming those people who who really get into the more like 
I don't want to use the word casual. Is it a more casual like The Sims, or is it is it still The Sims? Because that's um, that... kind of in a way. Mm-hmm. Um, like you do still have you know you can build your houses, you can buy different items, you know you can have a job, which you know you did in Sims One, and then mm-hmm. the big kind of innovation with jobs was like you went from saying Jocelyn is a cop, she works from nine a.m. to five p.m. So then basically your sim would just be out of your house and it would go on like super speedy time. And then your sim would get dropped off by a car at 5 p.m. because they just got mm-hmm. home from work. So like being actually able to go out and do your job was a big innovation. Sure. And uh, and yeah, now it's just like, yeah, now it's just like total utter crap. <laughs> yeah, it just feels like what they're doing with it is they're trying to create a platform like the Sims platform and then having a bunch of in-app purchases like it feels like they're going the smartphone free-to-play route except they're making you pay uh for well everything Mm -hmm. and you know not not to say that uh, nintendo's done that with Tomo. it's actually a really good free-to-play game but it's really shitty when you see a game like uh, the sims that that ea supposedly has respect for where they kind of dumb it down and you know there's there's no there's Nothing stopping them from putting a little extra work to have, you know, it more gameplay in the base sim game as opposed to... I've never understood the, the, all the expansions, like, just basically coming out again. That's like StarCraft kind of, like, you know, they split all, the game into three three sort of expansions, but they didn't lock out the Protoss race until you bought the Protoss expansion. It was mm-hmm. all in there. And I kind of feel like with The Sims, I'm not saying, you know, develop all the expansions into The Sims, but at least start the expansions in The Sims. Like, have a nightclub or have, you know, a couple jobs where maybe the jobs are just basically descriptions and you go off and, you know, you disappear and then you come back. It's like, I was a cop for eight hours. It was great. <laughs> you know, I arrested people, uh, you know, but in Simlish. Uh, and I don't, I can't do that right now. But it seems like they're... Just seems like they're they're taking shortcuts and what The Sims Five gets announced and it's just this whole same rodeo all over again. I am telling you, I am never ever 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 going to buy anything in the Sims franchise ever again. Like mm. whether it's another Sim City, whether it's another Sims, whether it's I don't even know what they would even call it at this point. But you know, some other iteration of like, oh, we totally fixed everything that was wrong with the Sims and here it is. Like no, no. F you right in the face, EA. Like, I am so... Yeah. This this was just, like, final straw material. Like, I just... I want to go just completely delete it from my system and tell everyone to never, ever play anything from EA ever again. Mm. <laughs> and then, you know, like, go back and reinstall, like, The Sims 2. Because <laughs> that was, like, an actual amazingly solid game. It's like they totally fell victim to... Like, oh, well, we make money with The Sims, so therefore, instead of saying The Sims 2 is the best Sims that we're ever going to make, let's just keep putting out content for that. Because if they just kept doing expansions for The Sims 2 or even The Sims 3, people would have kept buying it. Like, they didn't need to make a new base game. They could have just stayed with that and just did expansion, expansion, expansion. It could have been like Warcraft. And instead, they're just like watering down the product pretending you need a new base game and then putting Mm. out the same expansion themes but with less content with each iteration like it's so bad (laughs) yeah i mean uh it's it's unfortunate and you think ea would learn their lesson because they did the exact same with sims 3 i think they did the exact same with that sims online game they did Mm -hmm. you know and and i I forgot that that was even a thing (laughs) yeah sorry about that uh like i just don't understand the mentality of like do they now equate the sims to their sort of like casual brand like is that what they're doing where they're just i don't even think that they know what they're doing realistically like it just seems so weird and like if they announced the sims 4 it's like what so i paid 20 bucks Mm -hmm. and got content that came out within the last month like it's already on sale like ridiculous sale so they're clearly not like actively selling this crap like actual little literal crap like i don't think anyone's buying the sims anymore i probably just gave them their only 20 dollars. <laughs> like <laughs> that is unfortunate yeah but hopefully you don't have to put yourself through that again 
You should play City Skylines. That that'll yeah. uh, that'll see, give you your, this is your the thing. feel. I literally had like it was installing and I was like, you know what? I miss the Sims. I miss Sim City. I haven't like they just put new content out for Sims 4. Maybe they fixed all the problems and they fixed just like the total emptiness that the like the world just felt completely empty. Mm -hmm. Cuz you basically had like your house and then you couldn't even like you used to be able to walk over and visit your neighbors and there was no load screen and you had a car and you could kind of go anywhere and now it's just like you have your little lot and you can't go anywhere or do anything because there's nothing to do <laughs> mm. and so i thought maybe they fixed that it turns out they did not so that sucks <sighs> i'm done i am done you're done i am done I'm going Everything. to go back and reinstall all of my expansion packs and The Sims 2 and just say, screw you, Sims 4. You are broken and empty and janky and I hate you. <laughs> Rage uninstall. Yeah. So and we have now talked way too long about what we've been playing. So, uh, yeah, we just wanted to remind everybody that this episode of The Gamers Inn is brought to you by a Black Desert online guild called the Knights Templar. They are actively recruiting mm -hmm. over on the server. Okay. Orwin Balanos 2 is that how because there's a lot of there's a lot of colons here there's a lot of colons I am not exactly sure Orwin might be like the world server than Bal I don't know okay. it, but, but I think that that's the information on their website so it's probably okay. important <laughs> So if you are looking to get into Black Desert Online, which is still going strong, like this is now, I think, week six that we've been doing this. And um, yeah, the, I mean, the game's been out for five or six weeks. That is way longer than the hype around ESO lasted. So I think, you know, a lot of people are still playing this. It's it's getting really good reviews and players seem to be really enjoying the BDO experience. So if you're looking to get into it, I would encourage you to. And uh, yeah check out Knights Templar because they're recruiting, they're fun, they're active, they focus on actually helping new players as opposed to just being like, uh, WTF heal much? So <laughs> <laughs> I really think that, uh, yeah, they've got people all over the place. It sounds like a really great guild to join. They're, uh, you know, US, Australia, and everything in between. So it's really easy to find people to group up with at any time of day. So make sure that you find out all about this guild at their super pro website, knightstemplarguild.com mm -hmm. that brings us to the topic of the week which is really more just news odds and ends this week there there wasn't anything big and crazy going on um other yeah. than the blizzcon 2016 announcement so we have actually officially heard that there will be a blizzcon no surprise <laughs> and uh, tickets go on sale i believe um april 20th and what was the second date uh 20th and the 23rd so a wednesday and a saturday and uh, the actual convention is going to be the first weekend in November. So it's the 4th and 5th of November. I still think two days is not enough. Like, no. <laughs> it's actually, it's a little bit disappointing. Um, they've got Overwatch, which is actually going to be, like, fully out and announced. Uh, Legion is going to be out by then. Mm -hmm. They've got Hearthstone. They've got Heroes. They've got um, StarCraft and Diablo, which are probably going to be a little bit less prevalent. But Yeah, StarCraft especially. But I wonder if Diablo, like, will get... Because that, that they kind of have to have their big sort of announcement, right? And I wonder if they'll, I wonder if they'll have something for Diablo. Like Diablo's due up, right? It's been a while. It's been a really long time. Um, it might be that they're just kind of moving away from Diablo as a game. They're going mm -hmm. more towards these kind of like multiplayer online, super crazy, over the top, fun experiences. Mm -hmm. Get in, get out in twenty minutes, sort of thing. Um, even a long heroes game is like 30 minutes so i don't yeah. know i think i think that uh yeah we could we could be seeing the end of uh starcraft and diablo i hope as, as not. big i mean as, as big like centers of what blizzcon yeah. is because we've got oh um, I yeah like um they'll probably still have i mean the starcraft world championships is is huge mm -hmm. um but yeah I don't know. Oh, I, I see this... what you're saying. You 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 think that BlizzCon is is turning less of like let's announce a bunch of cool stuff and more of an esports venue, right? Because they now have yeah. four different well, games that they can do esports for. But that's the thing. And well, technically they five. have five because yeah. Warcraft actually has the whole PvP thing. Um, <laughs> but, <coughs> excuse they? me. Do they? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, the, I'm the, wow, the WoW Arena PvP World Championships is actually, it's pretty big at BlizzCon. They get a whole yeah. hall just to themselves, and it's always packed. So right. there are some people that enjoy watching WoW PvP. 
but uh, but yeah, they've got so they've got Warcraft, Hearthstone, Heroes, Overwatch, and Starcraft. So they've got five world championships that are happening all at BlizzCon. Then when you think about five or six games potentially getting announcements, like there just isn't enough time to take it all in. And most people who are fans of Blizzard games are fans of all Blizzard games. Like they're not there specifically just to see heroes. They're probably there to see like, oh, I want to see heroes and I want to see Hearthstone and I want to see the Starcraft. Like Mm -hmm. there's just not enough time to see all the esports and all the announcements in two days it's just it's just not enough it's crazy because yeah. there's definitely going to be an overwatch like something whether it's an actual oh. world championship or just like a tournament or something but it, mm-hmm. it'll be there in an esports capacity so yeah and I, I really dig like as someone who enjoys blizzcon from home i really dig the sort of overall announcements across these these games that get a bunch of content so like there's usually a big presentation for hearthstone there's a big presentation and sort of like highlight video for the year of heroes of the storm and i think we'll get the same thing with overwatch with the year of overwatch being their first full year in in uh, uh, being an actual product as opposed to being a uh, can't get into beta i'm not bitter but um <laughs> i i just I, it is unfortunate when you say like you know StarCraft. You know StarCraft will exist as a as an esports. WoW will have Legion, and they'll probably announce some patch that people raiders will be excited about. But mm-hmm. for those that love Diablo, they're kind of if they miss out this year, like that's kind of probably the nail in the coffin. And mm-hmm. uh, I know Blizzard has gotten really good lately of not announcing a product then releasing it six years later, like they did with Diablo three and StarCraft two. Maybe that's what they're doing, and that they are working on the next Diablo, but it's not. It's they're not like not telling us about it. <laughs> yeah, like it, that's that's a possibility. But with StarCraft, uh, you know, I played a little bit of the Nova Corps Ops thing, the episode packs, and you know, they could announce another one of those. But I get the sense that like that's not a priority for them at, at BlizzCon. And um, from what I've heard from people who actually go to the event, like the esports is probably the best thing ever. Um, so that's exciting, and. You know, they probably have a whole team dedicated to making BlizzCon every year. So, I think it, it's a safe bet that they'll have BlizzCon every year now, right? I think so. I mean, mm-hmm. they've got enough games now to carry a BlizzCon every year. I think mm-hmm. um, they've also got <laughs> enough money and a big enough team that they literally have an entire team that just plans BlizzCon. So, yeah. I think uh, Blizzard's come a long way since I guess when was it that it was canceled? Twenty eleven or twenty twelve? Um, yeah. one of those two, anyways, there wasn't a BlizzCon and they basically just said, we have too much coming out this year. Um, we need to focus on actually getting content out as opposed to throwing a big party. And now, I mean, like I said, there's just, there's so much going on. They've got all these world championships. There's just esports has just exploded. Mm-hmm. So I think, yeah, there's, there's no way we don't get a BlizzCon every year. Like, and I mean, it used to be a two day event for three games and now it is a two day event for six games. And like, I just, it blows my mind that they haven't pushed it to Sunday as well. <laughs> maybe, maybe they go three days, uh, not this year, but next year. Like that seems like, so. a, because it seems like that would be a lot of extra planning mm-hmm. and it wouldn't just literally be shuffling some stuff from Saturday to Sunday. I think it would, it would require a lot more effort and, and maybe that's their goal for 2017, like it, maybe a, I don't know what BlizzCon milestone is coming up, but I could totally see them. Like, if they have enough time and and, and content for three days, there's got to be a time when they make that shift. And mm-hmm. uh, I know a lot of people who spend thousands of dollars to go out there would be happy to have another day filled with Blizzard-related content, right? Exactly. Um, so uh, to make it more worth their while. And, and the last thing, it looks like, uh, I, I remember last year just in terms of buying tickets, like they had it on Eventbrite and, and it crashed a bunch or something and they have it on universe now does that mean anything to you like is that a is that a um, good deal i didn't have any problems with um eventbrite i got my ticket in on the first day in the first wave i was you know super good at clicking and refreshing or something i guess i don't know but um yeah we'll have to see how this new, i mean they always have issues they had issues when they did it themselves now they have issues with eventbrite you know there there will be issues not everyone can get a ticket so not everyone's going to be happy yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, it's so. a good point. But yeah, um, the other thing that we have in our odds and ends this week is uh, more Blizzard kind of um, news. It's Blizzard uh, week. Yeah, it's, it is Blizzard week in the news. So we have a butt gate update, <laughs> <laughs> which Rhymes. I think Ryan put in there just to try to trip me up. <laughs> But um, so last week we talked about uh, the Tracer pose and how there was a forum post 
that asked for it to essentially be removed. And uh, it was the over the shoulder pose. And they were basically saying it over sexualized a character that um, is not meant to be that way. So Blizzard put in a replacement pose. Mm -hmm. There's, I would say, even more awkward butt in this one. <laughs> it, it's a straight up homage to a pinup art. Like, yes. In the article, if you scroll, and and again, I'll, like this... I'll put the just so anyone who's interested and hasn't seen can see. Yeah. Um, this is the original pose, which was the over the shoulder, and the new pinup pose. Yeah, and and to me, uh, the original complaint was sort of there was a dual complaint there. One of it was it doesn't feel like fun and tracer e, mm -hmm. and also it's over sexualizing the character. And then Kaplan said, "Oh yeah, we're gonna change it. Don't worry, we already have one. We didn't like it. It's fine." And then they bring this one in, and it's kind of. I think it kind of solves both issues that they were having in, the, in terms of people like, but we want the butt, you know, and mm -hmm. and we want Tracer to be, you know, sexualized or whatever. I don't know who was saying that, but it's a forum. A lot of people were. And this is kind of like, it's quirky, it's fun, and it also still displays, like you said, it's it's more butt. They didn't get rid of the wedge, nope. <laughs> which, you know, as... It as, still uh, looks like she's wearing painted on pants. <laughs> Yeah, as uh, Polygon says, it here it is, and yes, butt cleavage is still on display, which I I think that's an interesting way of putting it. But mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, I mean, I don't know. Like this, this seems like a fair trade because the old pose was boring, mm -hmm. you know. Oh yeah, this is definitely a much more like a, it's generally just a better pose in general. Like it's very cheeky, very tracery, and I I don't mean cheeky in the in the butt pun way. Just like it's it's very like cutesy. Yeah. Um, but I think what kind of annoys me a little bit about this pose is that it still has the same problem that the mm -hmm. over the shoulder pose had. I think it's actually a little bit worse because I don't know. You can see looking at the pinup version, like you see the side of the pinups, butt because mm -hmm. that is just the natural way that your body goes. Like, you see Tracer's whole butt, and it's just like, I don't really think that's how butts work. <laughs> She's almost, like, craning her neck, like, so you can see her entire face. Yeah, I don't know. Butt. It just, it's it's weird how, like, her knee looks like it's kind of going, it, it looks more awkward to me, I guess is what I'm trying to get at, <laughs> than the over-the-shoulder pose. Like, it just looks like, uh, yeah, I don't know. It just, it's kind of funny, but. Yeah, and, and the same issue I have. I had last week is the same issue I have this week in that we are we are spending time critiquing like a fictional character in a fictional world in a cartoon world like I understand it's important and there's been a lot of conversations even on the A-Move network with uh, Overwatchers in which Garrett and, and Patrick got into it and had a very good point about it and there's this it, there's so much said about it but like at the end of the day it's it's Blizzard's product it's Blizzard's characters and the character, the, this pose is more fun, therefore more like the character. Um, but you're right. Like, it's it's kind of weird that they, Blizzard has this thing for butts. I'm telling you. <laughs> Just, they do. Like, StarCraft has a weird amount of butts. I think that's the reason, like, in, in uh, Heart of the Swarm, like, they turned Kerrigan back into a human. Just so they could show her human butt in the glorious StarCraft II engine. I think that's why they did it. <laughs> Nothing to do with story. So I don't know. It's a, I don't. It's a better pose, but it'll be interesting well, to see what people. For me, do. what I like more about this pose is her face. I think that it looks a whole lot more, like she looks like she's having fun. In the other mm -hmm. one, she just I don't know. She looks like Bored. I'll stand this way if you want me to, but this one <laughs> looks like. <laughs> a, you're right. Like that's totally what it, what it comes across as. And when you say it that way, it's like it just feels icky. You know? <laughs> Like you, it's not the character that the character wouldn't do that, and and it sounds like it's like yeah, if I give you twenty Blizz coins, like just pose like this, it's like that's gross. Like, but with the 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 other character, um, can't remember her name. The the French uh, widowmaker. Yeah, widowmaker. Like that's a pose that I think she would have. It's still mm -hmm. a boring pose, but you wouldn't have to pay her Blizz coins for for it to happen, I guess. Yeah. But. Uh, <laughs> Because you do unlock these with Blizz coins or whatever you're unlocking them with yeah. or randomized or whatever. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I just, uh, it just feels weird that this is in the news. And ha have people sort of uh, been having issues with this new pose? Because it feels like the same poster could come back and, and say at least half of the same things, you know? Yeah. 
Um, honestly, I don't, I've kind of been staying away from it. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm a little bit tired of talking about Tracer's butt, so yeah, I didn't topic. even, yeah, I didn't even bother reading any comments or really thinking about this too much. I was kind of just like, new pose, just as much butt cleavage. Yeah. GG Blizzard question mark, I guess. I don't <laughs> like, know, like, whatevs. <laughs> the Reddit post is basically like, you know, good job, Overwatch devs. Replace tra- Tracer's booty pose for even better booty pose. That's what I'm talking about. And I'm like... I don't like Reddit. Uh, (laughs) Man, oh man. But yeah, so I don't know. I'm just, uh, yeah, I'll be, I just don't want to talk about it anymore. This is the last week we will talk about Quantum Break and Buttgate on Gamers in Prime, but we will have a specific, no, I'm just joking. (laughs) We're not doing Specific Buttgate episode? Is that where you're going with that? It's a new, I couldn't even finish the joke. I couldn't (laughs) finish the joke. Oh, man, we wanted to remind everyone that we are going to have some sort of a game night this Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern. So we'll probably be doing something. We'll be streaming something. Um, Yeah, I don't think Ryan and I haven't picked a game yet, but we'll do something. We will see. Uh, 8 p.m. Eastern. That is over on twitch.tv slash jossplays. Also wanted to remind everyone that we have a Discord server for our patrons. So uh, if you go over to patreon.com slash thegamersin, you can get all the info about the Discord server. We're in there all the time chatting with all of the fans. So if you want to talk to Ryan or I or some other TGI fans, then head on over to our Discord server. Which brings us to our listener feedback section. We, uh, first of all, have some games to give away. So uh, I think Ryan is going to throw a couple of codes in chat. But the one I wanted to tell you about is uh, we have a code for South Park, the Stick of Truth. So what we're going to do about that is uh, we actually want to hear your opinions. Not about Buttgate. Anyone writes me a Buttgate email, I will not read it. (laughs) We want your opinions about Quantum Break and what you think about breaking up, (laughs) break, Quantum Break, breaking, get it? I I know, I totally nailed it. Um, So breaking up the gameplay and putting these TV episodes in between acts of the game. So we want to know what you think about that mechanic, that idea. Um, Whether you've played Quantum Break or not, uh, we want to hear from you. So... Anyone who sends us an email about Quantum Break is actually going to get entered into a contest to win South Park Stick of Truth, which is, if you are a fan of South Park, a really fantastic game. <laughs> it definitely kind of channels the humor and uh, and characters of South Park very, very well. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's a great game and totally worth playing, especially if you haven't had a chance to check it out. So yeah, definitely write an email, not about Buckgate. And a random listener will get South Park Stick of Truth. Um, So, Ryan, do you want to just quickly tell us about the other two codes that you threw in? Yeah, so I threw... So those listening on the podcast, like, this might be more of a a normal thing. I I subscribe to the monthly Humble Bundle, and for the life of me, I can't stop for some reason. (laughs) I just just like the... Like, it's like Loot Crate, but it's video games. It's exactly what I want. Like, random video games to play. Uh, But unfortunately, I own a lot of video games already, so some of them are repeats. So I threw uh, This War of Mine in there, which is a sort of survival management set in a uh, city uh, torn apart by war. It's really interesting and brutal. Think uh, Last of Us, but uh, more smashing people in the face for food. Uh, There's also Nova 111, which is another side-scroller. It's kind of turn-based, but... uh, Real time at this, it's it's really weird and and a very interesting game. It was actually free on PlayStation Plus not too long ago, but that's the the Steam version for you folks. So, cool. Enjoy. So, yeah, first person to actually go in there and uh, grab those codes gets them. So good luck, chat room. Have fun. Mm-hmm. Um, we did get some listener feedback <laughs> about Buttgate this week. Oh. Uh, the first one comes just from Webby who says, uh, people seem to find something to complain about no matter what. If Blizzard feel that they want to change part of the game, fine. If not, also fine. It's Blizzard's IP after all. Blizzard have always provided for the players, and I personally trust them enough that this won't stop me playing anything they release. As Jocelyn said, don't like it, don't play it. Yeah, that's solid. Uh, That's kind of exactly what we said. And uh, Night Vale follows up on the same topic. Uh, you know what really bothered me about uh, this whole Tracer's butt debacle? Why was the original poster's eight-year-old daughter playing a game that's rated T? Why is the poster's eight-year-old daughter playing a game with the level of violence in Overwatch? Why is a company like Be- Blizzard beholden to <laughs> those two Bs to one parent who is apparently unable to parent his or her child? Overwatch is a good game, but by its nature, it isn't meant for children that young. I agree with your assessment of Jeff Kaplan's responses. He should have been more thoughtful instead of posting what was an obviously off-the-cuff response initially that would have headed off the firestorm that this began. 
became. Uh, what do I know, though? I'm old and can remember <laughs> when the only way we could tell Pac-Man and Miss Pac-Man apart was when she had a pink bow on her head. Shit. Pink bow? Scandal. <laughs> yeah. She wasn't wearing anything else. Oh, Talk about... man. Talk about sexualizing characters. Yeah. Pac- <laughs> I guess Pac-Man is never wearing anything at all, so... Yeah, it's a it's it's a it's a brave new world that we live in. Pants on character. I think they added pants to Pac Man lately. So they've you know, Namco's come a long way in terms of <laughs> listening to forum posters. Um yeah, I mean those are both very good points and ones we've we've made and, and I think in terms of uh the eight year old daughter thing, um to me, now that I have a kid and I'm obviously gonna have this issue uh with my with Caden playing video games that are, are above his age level, and I think it really comes down to what you're comfortable with and how you explain to your kid of what what's happening. And I think Overwatch, while rated teen, an eight year old could play it as long as you are comfortable uh, with with what's going on in the game. If you are comfortable and you're able to properly explain that to your kid, then I think that translates well. And again, like I'm not at that point, and I'm kind of just like guessing uh and and i I think that's kind of how parenting works is just really good guessing um (laughs) unless you want to read a book like who does that uh but i think it's just it's interesting i think uh with that forum poster she probably should have been like you know if you aren't comfortable with your eight-year-old playing the game then don't let her play the game Mm -hmm. um that's that's on you that's not on blizzard like blizzard got a teen teen rating so it's been properly rated and that content changing wouldn't change the rating unless uh, they took out shooting, which would be the entire game. And then you get an E because everyone would just walk around saying hi to everybody. Uh, <laughs> and, and, you Asking know, they, them questions about pizza. <laughs> exactly. What's your favorite food, Tracer? Well, Governor, I don't know. You know, like that would that would be interesting, actually. But but also kind of boring. And they could go the other way. Like they could literally just give her assless chaps and go M rated, like if they wanted to. And yeah. then it'd be a, it'd be it's it's just about the content and the rating. And there's a lot of points in that. Like you can look at a forum post and you can tear it apart. But uh, I think at the end, hopefully, like this all has been handled well. And, you know, not everybody's going to be happy. But I think more importantly, Blizzard's happy. And the core gamers that loved Overwatch and Tracer to begin with are still happy. Mm-hmm. Um, you can't make everyone happy. This Probably this poster that, that talked about their eight-year-old isn't happy. Because it's it's still the same thing again, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I just I feel like this person probably just shouldn't let their child play Overwatch if they're not comfortable. You know, uh, that's not on Blizzard. Yeah, I think that um, this this is the same sort of a situation with um, people who let their ten and eleven year olds watch Deadpool. It's like mm. there's ratings for a reason, and mm. they are generalized. So in the end, it's a judgment call. But there's a whole lot of time and a whole lot of development between 8 and 13. <laughs> so, again, yeah. it's, it comes down to what you're comfortable with. But, uh, but, yeah, I think that the level of violence in Overwatch is something that... Because even though, like, I mean, it's, I'm, I'm thinking of Quantum Break right now. And, I mean, mm-hmm. there are slow motion death scenes with bullets and blood flying out of these people. And Overwatch is not on that level, but the death animations for a lot of the Overwatch characters are particularly mm-hmm. disturbing, or could well, be to an eight-year-old. <laughs> uh, yeah, and, and also the noises that characters make when uh, they are caught in like a sort of a time warp and then pass away. Like that, that is, can be chilling and, and really affect someone. And Again, it just it really comes down to whatever you're comfortable with and you sort of have to judge for yourself. Like those ratings are you know, they are strictly mandated, but they are recommendations in terms of um besides purchasing a product, uh, mm-hmm. but they are recommendations to parents to say like, look, rather than you having to play through this 80-hour game, we can tell you straight up there are boobs, there are swords, there is blood, there is dying. Witcher 3 is not for kids, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh and you just look at a box and you see that that little word that tells you that and those are important, and I hate like I hate being that person who like calls other people's parenting into question. But this is one of those instances where like there's stuff there for you to make good calls, and like you know, if you're not comfortable, then you know, Blizzard doesn't have to change their game for you. They don't need to make a kid version. Um, yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> All right, we have one last email here from Chet Chetsubo. 
Grandpa, who says, uh, how to cure the 100-hour game blues. Hi, folks. If you want the ultimate antidote to 100-hour open world ears. <laughs> years? I don't know. <laughs> um, try the new Track Mania. Little 30 to 90 second chunks of fun. Love the show. So uh, have you tried Track Mania at all? Or... Yeah, there's a there's a demo up on PlayStation Network that I played around with. And yeah, it is certainly one of those games that would be great to just jump into, play 30 to 90 seconds. It's essentially a uh it's a it's a racing game, but you race against people uh time-based. You're not actively racing against people. You're sort of just trying to beat their time and there's oh, these crazy Oh, so like tracks. the ghost things in Mario Kart? Yeah, like literally like there's a each track has 100 ghosts and you see them all on the track at once and some of the tracks are pretty straightforward where it's like a loop de loop or just a figure eight. And other times it's like jumps and side like loops. And it's just is it like the top 100 or like a random assortment of 100s. I think it's live people playing the game. Oh, um, cool. Yeah. You join like I was playing a server and you join that server and it's like, OK, there are 80 people playing. And as soon as you start the race, everybody's sort of racing at the same time and you kind mm. of see. And then I think everyone has five minutes to complete that track. And then at the end, it says where you ranked. And then oh, you cool. move on to the next one. Um, the demo has an hour uh, of online time and then a selection of single player sort of races that Ubisoft has made. And yeah, he's totally right. It's a great way to jump in and get another racing game. And I can't remember the last time I played a racing game. So it was nice. Very, very cool. Mm -hmm. uh, that's going to do it for us this week. We are we are way over time. <laughs> yeah. Butt gate. What are you going to do? Yeah, I did. Them butts. Yep. <laughs> Visit us on the web at gamersinpodcast.com. You can also find us on A Move TV along with other fabulous podcasts, including The Angry Nerd, Into the Nexus, Overwatchers, and The Angry Chicken. You can follow us on Twitter. You can find me, Jocelyn, at Joss Plays. Ryan is at R. Murphy. And don't forget to follow the show at The Gamers In. The video versions of all our episodes can be found on our YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash TV. You can also find the show on Facebook and Google+. Email the show at info at gamersinpodcast.com if you would like to tell us about your thoughts on Quantum Break, including a live action TV show in the middle of their game. And mm -hmm. if you do so, you will be entered to win a copy of South Park, The Stick of Truth. Thank you very much for listening this week. We will see you again next week, same time, same place, twitch.tv slash TV at 7 p.m. Bye, everybody. Bye.